sex, submission, and even dirty laundry on the floor. These are some of the issues that Pastor Chris Broadbutt tackles in his new book. The book is called So You Want to Be a Wife. <laughs> very interesting name, very controversial book. Today, we'll hear from him about this very controversial book and about what the book has to say about relationships, marriage, getting ready for marriage from his perspective for the woman. Welcome to Shelf Life. So I have with me the one and only Pastor Chris Bradba. <laughs> How are hey. you today? I am good. I am good. Thanks for having me on in your great program. Sure. Appreciate it. Taking a little break and getting some time to actually write. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm up in Florida and actually, you know, I got COVID, came up here to Florida and got COVID. I, I don't know what, what, what strand with it was, you know, Delta or what, but it had me knocked down for at least 30 days. So every time I went to get tested, it came back um, that I was actually positive. I had COVID. And um, so I ended up, you know, locked away in quarantine for quite a while and made good use of the time you know it's hard that. to say it's hard to say but i, I kind of had a good time <laughs> you know, you know what? Um, um, it's hard to say but sometimes you have to be locked away to produce yeah. this stuff like what you're producing now like this very very controversial book <laughs> called so you want to be a wife which i have to tell you i was i was laughing and i was in tears um in uh, quite a oh, bit yeah. of Yes, <laughs> having been a wife myself more than once, um, <laughs> I was able to identify with so much that's in the book, and I'm sure that uh, you've had a lot of clapback and a lot of you know controversy yes. over the stuff you've written. Yes. But before we get to the book, hold on, we'll and come back. Tell me a little bit about Chris Broadbill. Where are you from? Well, um, I, I I I gave my life to the Lord when I was 18 years old. You know, I was a, as my dad would say, a wandering soul. You know. Um, before that, I was all over the place doing a lot of stuff, chasing girls and parties and fast cars and all of that stuff. And um, ran into a friend of mine from Wilmers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew he was a popular guy in school and heard he had given his life to the Lord. You know, how could he do such a thing, you know, and ruin something great that he had, you know, because he, he was very popular and he would DJ and all of that. And so I had to find out from him, why would he give up such a promising, you know, um, opportunity life. to have so many women at his feet, you know, because all the, 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 the high school barbecues and so on, he was the thing. And he told me he gave his life to the Lord. Wow. And so I thought, you know, what in the world, you know, you'd throw that all away for and why? And he said, you know, this life is so much better. I'm having so much more fun. So I had to investigate for myself how we could be having more fun in this thing called Christianity. And so I followed him to church and gave my life to the Lord at 18 and never looked back. And look back. I've been serving him since, you know, I've pastored in, um, in the inner city in Jamaica, I've pastored um, two churches in Barbados. Um, we launched one in Bridgetown, Barbados. And um, I was up there in, in uh, St. Michael with another church called Revival Time Assembly for five years and I've been serving just serving but, yeah. but you know what we need to talk about the book right <laughs> we need to talk about this all book. right right well it's a it's a product of being locked in it's a product <laughs> of being locked in and realizing that there is a cry out there you know listen the truth is I had a lot of time to think and a lot of time to do a lot of surfing and I ended up on TikTok and oh, I ended up in YouTube listening to people like Dr. Um, um, uh, Helen Smith and, and some of these the writers and thinkers on the issue of relationship. And then it came back to me that, yes, this is true. This stuff is real, you know, that, that we have to do better in preparing couples for marriage because there's too much divorce. Okay. There's too much heartache and heartbreak. Okay, so you say couples, but the name of the book is So You Want to Be a Wife. And you yes, chose to target women um yeah. you know seriously initially 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 i like that i like that because <laughs> there's some actually i found the book contra controversial but i also found some serious reality in the book because 
one of one of the first things that you deal with, and we're going to talk about the sex topic, but before you even get there, right? One of the things that you deal with is all the stuff that when you're getting married and it's all hairy fairy and everybody's in love and it's all exciting, you don't think about the dirty laundry that you're going to leave on the ground. You don't think about what you're going to do and you're not prepared for what you're going to do if he happens to be one of those men who like to be out with the boys and you put up with it while right. you were single but now you're that's married right. and he's still out with the boys nobody prepares you for that and that's one of the it's things true. that i see you talk about a lot here you know and and why did you go down this road why this book because it is a reality it you know we the the thrust of of love and the butterflies in the belly you know they say love is blind and you overlook the fact that him kind of untidy and you you overlook the the, the fact that him 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 burp loud you know and those things and you 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 get married anyway and then those things take you off mm -hmm. and you forgot that you saw some of these things before you know and it, it was never resolved and so the idea is no surprises let's prepare you for each other better you know and think about some of the things that people don't tend to think about right yeah you know i, I had one couple um because i do premarital counseling and one couple um she said this that 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 um all men cheat and how are you getting married with that in the back of your head yeah that all men cheat which is so not true it's not true I know that's not true. You know, I know that's not true. Um, but but she's getting married with that in the back of her head. Mm. So she's expecting it. She's expecting it. Which I means mean, she's going to be looking for it. And 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 figuring that he's doing it. Mm -hmm. So how do you start there? You know, um, and the, the Bible does tell us naturally, you have a man and you have a woman, there's going to be sparks because it's mm -hmm. two different types coming together. Right. So finding synergy is going to be difficult, but it's possible. And, and our role as, as, as counselors, as pastors, uh, in trying to help young couples is to remind them to think about the things that you don't tend to think about. What happens if he gets sick and he can't work for a right. year, for two years? What are you going to say? Is that no good man? And sickness don't have to be only physical health something wrong with him it can be emotional it can be psychological yeah. something wrong with yeah. him can be you mental know? he could be depressed he could be depressed so all of these things we tried to read i mean it, it's, it's it's an easy read on purpose. it is a very want, very easy read it's a small want to make sure book, they read it. very easy read yeah if you're if you're not inclined and to tell you the truth to why we how i started with the the, the the girls putting this out first girls tend to read i find they read a little more than guys you know, we guys will watch a video, we will go on TikTok, or we'll go on YouTube and we'll watch things and watch a movie. But the girls tend to read a little more, you know, they'll sit down and they'll read through. So we start, I started there. Okay. Certainly, I will have the other one come out shortly. All right. So you talk about what's in a good wife. <laughs> what's in a wife? <laughs> good sex, <laughs> frequent sex. <laughs> That's what's in a good wife. <laughs> Cost me if you want, oh, but I'm telling you, I need to ring the bell again on behalf of us guys. But Hello. seriously, hold on, before you ring your bell, how realistic? Because you say that, you know, um, at least twice a week, right? You and I was having this conversation. <laughs> now, how realistic is that 20 years down the road, 15 years down the road, when it get, you know, I mean, let's face it, let us be realistic. Since we're being real and your book is being real, let's be real. I mean, you've been with the same person for 15, 20 years. There's nothing new, nothing exciting. You've you've tried all the new and exciting things and you've- No, miss, I beg that. to differ, please. Please and thank you. I beg to differ. No, I know couples that, 20 years, 30 years down the line, it's still fiery and good. And I love to see them. I, you know, one particular couple comes to mind right now. Uh, you see them together, it looks like they're boyfriend and girlfriend, you know, and they're married over 30 years. Yeah, but but the sex part may have talked about because yeah, but, but you can see the right signs. The, the, you can see the signs, you know, that they're still touchy, 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 feely, feely with each other. And you realize that, you know, that romance will translate into the bedroom. So, so the imperative is to find a way to make it work. There are different 
people who write, you know, different things, uh, um, as you would have heard me allude to. I'm alluding to some work that others have done. When you say, even though it's written, you know, in a very jovial, free-spirited way, the reality is a lot of former information and studies have gone into this. Whether you, 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 you sneak into your, your best friend's house and you make, you know, there for a different environment all of those things matter you know and the reality is we are very creative beings you know the human spirit is a very creative thing and so if it means we need to you know we're going to the cinema and we meet me in the bathroom at you know in, in, in three minutes as husband and wife hello these things it's it's spice up the, the marriage and it just has to be that you're open to it you know, as we say, different places, different spaces, it helps to fire up the marriage. You know, okay, so we're scheduling that we're going to go to poetry for Christmas. And you know, we're not carrying no kids. And it's just me and you. And then when nobody looking, we on the beach. You and me, we're doing our thing. That spices up, you know, your marriage. And, and it, we, we both must be open to it. You know, it can't be just, if it's not in our room, on our bed, you know, like this, then it's not happening at all. It cannot be like that. It has to be. We're open to it. We're open to different things. In the in the book, I I refer to 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 again another book, the um the Kama Sutra thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't recommend any religious adherence to any. You know, I'm just saying people look at it and you and have seen that there are multiple things you can do in, in, in sex. It doesn't have to be because you're a Christian, it's missionary, you know, so, in keeping with your faith. Okay, so, because I know you get clapped back. I know that. I know you got clapped back. What kind of clap back you got on it, especially from the sex point of view? Because, you know, as Jamaicans, I'm not mm -hmm. a fundamentalist. I'm a, I'm a liberal Christian. Let me just put that out there so people know. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. that's who I am. Um, but from a fundamentalist standpoint, which happens to be most of our Christians in Jamaica, especially, uh, mm -hmm. how did- Will you be surprised? You'll be surprised. No, there's some good work being done by people like Dr. Carla Dunbar. Yes. There's a, some good work being done to wake up the church to say, listen, sex is spiritual and sex, and, and good sex is very spiritual, you know, especially with husband and wife, Hebrews 13. Um, marriage is good and the bed undefiled you know so it, it, and then uh, proverbs five but it speaks of um be ravished i, I include it in the book be <laughs> ravished what is what is ravished it's the experience of passionate love between husband and wife so it's encouraged by god so boring sex is not of god <laughs> okay you hear that people boring sex is not of god it's not of okay. god but and infrequent sex if i can add to it okay infrequent sex in a marriage scenario is not of God. In fact, as you would see in the book, again, I write it, it's, it's you know, you may laugh and so on, but it's serious, serious stuff that the, the, in 1 Corinthians 7, it says, don't defraud each other because it's seen as fraud. Because when you get married, when a man marries a woman, he's seeing her as the source of his sex. So if when he marries her, He's not getting what he signed up for. It's fraud. Okay. All right. It's fraud. So we <laughs> entered into this partnership. We entered into a partnership with an understanding because, you know, we smile and the honeymoon going come up and, oh, I'm going to go for the whipped cream and the hot chocolate, this, well, all of that stuff and that excitement. But that's not for the honeymoon. That's for life. You know, and, and so if it changes, that yeah, I, I know, I know, I know. For the ladies watching, I know. Sometimes you go on the honeymoon, and I've had to deal with cases like that where the man wasn't what you thought, and him just rough and tumble, and him don't know what to do, and so you're, you're not interested anymore. It doesn't mean now that you can start to deny him, even if he's not a good lover. Okay, That's a so, hard one. Okay, so let us let us um let us look let at us have people, it out. the people who have challenges. So. There are you mean health challenges or mental or just other challenges. Uh, you have so that's different. Situations. So that's different. Huh? That's different. Okay. If somebody is a health challenge, then you can't expect twice a week. Okay. All right. You no, know, and I say 
I say I say twice a week. I don't know many other counselors. I, I think I've run into one person who presents that same perspective. But I know that most counselors say um, sex has to be frequent for a healthy marriage. Yeah. There is clearly the issue of a sexless marriage. And that does not mean, as I say in the book, it does not mean sex, uh, a marriage that has no sex in it. It just means a marriage that has infrequent sex it's a and, sexless and you marriage. talk you talk very very frankly <laughs> that like i said this book had me laughing and rolling in tears because of how it is written right it's very frank language people it's very very open language and um you know when you talk about men they want sex they want sex you know like you were very 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 clear on that <laughs> about what men Please want and thank you but the, yeah. other thing, the other thing you were very clear on is the whole idea of women being prepared to be supportive of their husbands because men in trying to be the provider the hunter gatherer um you know they're always looking for new things to do always investing in new ideas always coming up with the next greatest thing to make money uh, and you talked about women not putting their men down mm -hmm. and how important it is to prepare for that how do you prepare a woman to know that this may very well happen. It's one thing if you marry somebody who is a doctor, you know, they're a doctor, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. But if you marry somebody who, let's say I was a man, <laughs> you know, who is multi-talented, does a million things, has a million things mm -hmm. going on, and my income mm -hmm. is not the same every month, you know, mm -hmm. how do you prepare a woman for a man like that? Well, as we, as we try to do in, in, in the book, it's to remind her that, you know, um, there is a support dynamic that has to be, you know, um, his success will be her success. And so she has to be strategic in how to support him, you know, how to, to get him back from what is a bad idea and how to push him into what is, push him into what's a good idea. Um, as, as is said, behind every successful man, there is a strong mm -hmm. woman. And, and you know what, strong and strategic. I don't know if you've heard the, the joke with the Obama. So, um, Michelle Obama referred to a, a guy that she used to date and, you know, and Barack um, is saying, e e yeah, well, look, aren't you happy you married me, you know, and now you're first lady and you are Michelle Obama and I'm president. And she says, no, well, if I had married him, he would be the president, you know, because <laughs> she would have gotten him there. So, 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 and, you know, it, it can be true because good, you know, good strong women know how to get the best from their men and to, to, to help. They're not, you know, we say the man is the head, but the truth is, uh, even for a Clinton situation, we know it was Hillary Clinton who run, runs the show. Yeah, we know that. You know, um, <laughs> and so on. So you see a strong, you see a man out there and it's consistent with Proverbs 31, you know, the virtuous woman, the good wife. The wife, it says her husband is known in the gate, but she is the strength. She's the businesswoman. She is the she's in charge of 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 of, of the of farming and and she has fields and yeah, and she clothes. The family. Needed. She has employees, mm -hmm. and so he's just known. But she's the strength, you know. And um, I have another book coming out called Men Are from Mud, Women from Bone which really highlights the issue of our differences because mm -hmm. we need to remember we are different. And so, you know, in the book, we're trying to, um, I'm just reminding women that, look, it's something you need to think about. Your husband may come up with some silly ideas. I have done it, I'm guilty. I know many friends that have done it. I have, I have, yeah, I have two brothers, two stepbrothers. I've seen it, you understand? Mm -hmm. And um, good women are able to say, honey, I love your creativity. I love that you're thinking this way, and so, but just not now. Let's not do that now. In fact, let's not take all the city. Instead of what a fool, fool idea. Yeah. Where come with that nonsense from? Go on, go, go, go sit down with that. <laughs> yeah. And that irritates, it irritates because it makes, you know, a, we have a, a, a big part of us as men is our ego. Mm -hmm. And you can't crush that. If you crush our ego, you, you're becoming our, our worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. The, get, the, the, the last thing I do want to talk about in this book is the hot topic button of submission. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. In this um, feminist-oriented feminist um, system now. I will reserve my comment on my feeling about submission. Talk to us about submission as you have written it in the book. The idea of submission, again, because of the, what I would say the feminist drive is misinterpreted. The idea of submission is what I would say synergy. 
-hmm. It is finding synergy between the two. You, you know, again, a, a nice concept that the Bible introduces to us is can two walk together unless they're agreed? Yes, no, two people cannot walk together unless there's an agreement. And so in an effort to ensure that there's some sort of an agreement and synergy, there's this concept called submission. Work with him. You know, work with him. That's it. If you're going to walk with him, if you choose to walk with him, you have to learn to work with him. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can't be butting heads with him at every turn. You, you're not going to have a happy life, you know. Um, so you have to figure out. That's, I, I, you know, I don't want to get into all of the dynamics of, mm -hmm. you know, some of the things to do with it. But it's simple if we just think of it as finding synergy between okay. husband and wife. That's what submission is about. And it's not about being the doormat. Right. It's not about feeling used. It's about how do I use who I am and what I am to work with this man to make him the best he can be. And, and that's my idea of submission as well. That's mm -hmm. how I view it. Uh, so I assume that when you do the book for the men, you're going to explain that to them. Sure, sure. I have, you know, again, I deal with a, a lot of guys. I, I, I am in a, a group that, um, it's a support group for, for men. And I'm a pastor in that group. And so I hear, I hear their thinking, many guys, but she should have just listened to me. I mean, tell her, every time she do, and they're, they're, they're bludgeoning mm -hmm. their wives with their mouths. And so that doesn't work either. Yeah, that doesn't work. You know, you have to be sensitive to who she is. But for this book, it is figuring our, uh, the, the guys out, figuring the guys out and understand what we need with the sex, with the support, you know, um, with the preparation for us to receive us. You know, the issue of the belly, you know, knowing that men love food. As I said, my my experience, there was a lady who, you know, never got my attention until she cooked for me, you know, and I ate something from her hand. Then the room lit up and, you know, the clouds were gone. So what do we say then to the women who are going to say, um, so you're back to wanting me in the kitchen? Cooking. No. I mean, no, I, no, cook. no. I cook. All I want, no, just be strategic with the, with the food. I know good couples where the husband is the, is the cook, you know, the chef in the house, but it still remains he's a man. You have to be able to bring something to please him that give him a little tickle too, even though he's the chef, even though he's the cook in the family. You have to show that you can do something to help him too. To mm -hmm. say, yeah, even bring a thing for him, you drop off a little lunch for him at work, and that makes his world. That keeps him for a month. The fact that you just drop off a little, you, you made a little salad for him and carry it to him at work. Now he's the one that's cooking at home. Right. He has no problem doing, being, you know, coming home and cooking. But that you remember his belly, it will go a far way. And it's, wow. you know, uh, the, the, the challenge we're having now is that a lot of women are saying, you know, I'm tired of being the one to be looking, to be doing the cooking and uh, be looked at to, to answer our family's food needs. We understand that. And a lot of men have, have shrugged from the responsibility of jointly taking right. care of the, the food needs, you know, cooking and cleaning too and all of those stuff. But it still remains true that men love them belly. That and is food true. matters. The way to the man heart is still through his belly. So it's let me tell you, if next door lady cooking, cook, uh, baking cookies and baking cake and cooking food, even that chef, she, she, women know what they're doing. You know, you ask Eve, this, how did Eve get Adam to eat that fruit? His food, she bring in food to him. So it's, 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 it's standard. We love our belly, you know, and, and food gets us, our heads turned, you know, just like, you know, sh the, the, the shapeliness and the offer of sex. Uh, that's why I say to women, you have the power to, to run things. You do. God gave yeah, it to you. I mean, God well, gave it to you. <laughs> Some of us look yeah. at that I, I, I don't want to sound like, you know, um, men are, you know, have our sex craze and, you know, and, no, no, no. and so on. It is just what we are. God made us that way so that we could procreate properly and, you know, be fruitful and multiply. God gave us this drive where we need, as, as um, Dr. Miles Monroe would say, men don't want sex. They need sex. They need like it. we need oxygen. And so women have to understand that. Men, the, the, similarly, men need respect. We need to feel respected yes. because we have an ego, you know, um, and, and you have to be prepared for that. If you want to be a wife, you have to be prepared to, to partner with a man, especially if it's, a, you know, hopefully you're marrying oh. a man. 
it sounds to me like Pastor Broadbill, when you go back to Jamaica, you're going to have to do actually in-person seminars once COVID done keep um, for women. You know, it's, it's interesting that we always have for women, you have women telling women how to be a wife. And then usually have men telling men how to be a husband. So maybe we should partner. I'll talk to the men well, for you. Excellent, excellent. I'm a, I'm a for it. I am, I am. Because you know, I can tell men what we're looking for in a husband. Excellent. You know, excellent. What is that we're that you look for in a good husband? And so you know, I, I, I think we have something here. You know, I think there might be something to this. Let's thing. do it. Let's do it. it. This is the only pan. COVID is not the only pandemic. The situation with marriage warrants emergency response. Mm -hmm. Emergency response. I heard a very successful woman, she, she, excellent. She's been awarded, you know, in her field. She's a doctor mm -hmm. and um, researcher and all of that. And she says she has given up on happiness. Wow. She's married with kids and she was serious. She says, I've given up on happiness. I'm just doing what I need to do. Wow. And that's not good. If you have studied and you've labored and so on, you deserve to have a good life and be happy. And so we need to figure out how to do that. And I think that the foundation for happiness is indeed, well, knowing yourself and being comfortable in your own skin. But if you choose a partner, that the partner complements that whole situation of happiness, that you feel loved and you find a place to give your love, you know, you feel appreciated. And, you, you know, I know for me, I'm a hopeless, not a hopeless, I'm a hopeful romantic. I've been that way for a long time. And I say, you know, I love the moonlit walks. Yes. I love the, you know, the, the, the candlelight dinners. And I will do those things and so on. And so if, though, if I don't have those things, I'm not the happiest camper in the world. And I know there are many women and, all, and a lot of men like that. They want to have the companion. So it's all about knowing the person who you're partnering with. But Indeed. you know what, we, we're gonna have to have a different show, a different talk, sit down one day when COVID don't keep and just do a whole thing on this matter of relationship. Yes, please. Yes. Because it's always interesting, but I'm running out of time. So last last words, give me your last words. What, what All right, you well, I'm encouraging you, oh. um, I'm encouraging the couples, men and women to get the book, get a copy of the book. It's an easy read. It's not a very large book. But uh, it, it really is written to, 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 to summarize and, and encapsulate certain points so that um, you get it at a quick glance. And as you've heard us say, it's not a, it's not a very long read. But there are, you know, I've prayed over it. I've prayed over this, that it will help you. So for all your viewers, get the book. And, um, you know, if you want to contact me, there is an email address there. If you have any issues, if you want to cuss me out and say, why you say so? Well, no, don't contact me. You can contact my friend here, Judith. You can give her the cussing. She had me on. But no, really, get the book. It's not very expensive. There's the e-version um, that's even cheaper on Amazon. Uh, you can get, get, get the, the paperback on Amazon, and you can get the e-book on Amazon. And um, if you need to contact me, I do premarital sessions. And um, uh, it's very important to me and, and, that you experience happily ever after. And he's very easy to find. You can find him on all the social media platforms. As always, you can check mine. Um, you can follow the YouTube link. Uh, go to YouTube, go to my YouTube, go to his YouTube. He's Pastor Chris Broadbaugh. Easy to find, ladies and gentlemen. Pastor Chris, thank you so much. This was wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Sex, uh, not submission, but synergy. Synergy, <laughs> synergy. synergy. Um, yeah. taking, making sure that you're prepared for marriage is what this book is about. Everything from how you're going to handle the dirty laundry on the, on the floor, to how you're going to handle sex, to how you're going to raise children, everything in one small book called, So You Want to Be a Wife. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for hanging out here with me on Shelf Life. I'll see you again next week, same place, same time for some more Shelf Life and we'll see what else I've got hanging out on my shelf. Walk good, bless up. Take care.